Today I'm going to show you how I built a parabolic concentrator using common building materials. Oh, by the way, if you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel. I've tried building something like this with cardboard and it's just too difficult, so I decided to build it with OSB. I chose OSB because it is extremely affordable. You can get a sheet for like $15 and you can mill it just like plywood. Not only that, but it's light and strong and you can nail it or screw it as you need to to build something complicated like this. So it really beats cardboard. The first thing we need to do is create a parabola. And in order to do that, we need to calculate it so let me just show you in Graffer how this looks in real time. Uh, the equation is going to be x squared, so that's x times x, divided by 4 times the focal point. And in this case, I'm going to choose a focal point of 18 inches. So let's zoom out a little bit. Now you can see that you know, if you were to go way out here, this would look uh, like your typical parabola. But when we zoom in and we move this around, you can see that if you're going to go, say, three feet wide, then your total height on the ends is only four and a half inches. So you're only seeing part of the total parabola, and the focal point is going to be right here. So this is what we're going to build. Now if I could print this in one-to-one -one, I could just trace it but unfortunately it, it doesn't work that easily. So what I'm going to use is I'm going to calculate it in a spreadsheet and then transfer that to my wood. The first thing we need to do is build a template. From this template we'll create all the ribs necessary for the project. In order to do this, we need to draw a line about one inch from one edge and then mark one inch intervals along the entire length of the board. This will be our X direction. Now the Y direction we're going to get from the spreadsheet that we created earlier. And so we're going to mark this at even intervals, one to two inches maximum, and then we're going to draw a curve. After the template is rough cut with a jigsaw or a bandsaw, the next step is to take it over to the oscillating sander and smooth out the curve. You want to spend a good deal of time on the template and get this just as accurate as you can. And the reason is that, that all future ribs will be made from this piece of wood. There are a couple of ways of cutting out the ribs from the template. You can simply trace the pattern onto a new piece of wood, cut each one with a jigsaw, and then sand each one on the oscillating sander. Doing it this way will certainly work, but it's a lot of work and it's not as accurate as the second method that I chose. Since I had to make 20 ribs, I chose to use a router with a flush trimming bit. This method is great in that each copy is the exact same as the template. Now keep in mind that routers are very dangerous, so don't do this if you don't know how. The first step to using a router with a flush trimming bit is to adjust the height of your bit. The bearing rests on the template, which is on the bottom, and you want to make sure that it doesn't touch the table and that the bearing doesn't come near the piece that you're trying to cut. The next step is to clamp your rough cut piece on top of your template and then move the router very slowly from right to left. After you have made your primary cut from right to left, you can clean up the edge by going from left to right very slowly, but you never want to do left to right on the first pass. Now that all 20 ribs are cut out with the router, I'm going to just take a piece of sandpaper and clean up all these edges. The next step is to draw center lines on my backer board, which I can use for layout.
Since the ribs are about a half inch wide, 20 ribs stacked together will not go to a single point. So I'm going to create a circle at the center and stand them back a little bit. And this will have very little effect on the focal point of my light. Next, I'm going to nail two cleats onto each rib so that I can screw these down to the board. Next, I'm going to countersink and pre-drill in one step each cleat so that I can very easily attach this with screws. Now I'm going to attach four on my layout line so that I can evenly space the rest of the ribs. The next step is to simply attach the rest of the ribs. All you have to do is spread them out evenly and you don't have to measure them exactly using the method that I'm going to use. Here is what the assembly looks like at this stage, just before I attach it to the board. I went ahead and attached all my ribs to my backup board, and the next stage is to add a layer of cardboard. The cardboard will be used as a surface for which my reflective material can rest. The technique is pretty simple. Just put some glue down where you're going to put your piece of cardboard and then use some heavy duty staples to attach it while the glue dries. To make the surface as even as possible, I'm going to use a little bit of tape over any rough spots. As you can see by looking at the bottom, each cardboard is securely attached to the ribs for a very accurate parabolic profile. At first I tried attaching some aluminum foil, and although this did work a little bit, the maximum temperature I could reach was about 170 degrees when I tried to boil water. So since aluminum foil had pretty inferior results, I ripped it all off and instead applied a layer of aluminum flashing, which has a nice smooth surface. To apply the aluminum flashing, the best technique I found was a hot glue gun. What you have to do is you have to lay it out very carefully, start at one end, and then very slowly and systematically work your way to the other end. Place each row of flashing just as close as you can to the previous row. But keep in mind there will be a gap between rows because you cannot put them together parallel going around a circle like this. This small gap will have little to no effect on the overall performance of the dish, uh, but you can easily repair it by using a little bit of foil tape. I found the easiest method on the end is just to leave them a little long and then using a heavy pair of gloves just bend them over so you don't have any sharp edges. So just to demonstrate that this small slits where cardboard is showing is not an issue, I'm going to do the smoke test. Now the time is late in the day, about 4.30 in the afternoon, so I'm going to get a piece of cardboard and see what kind of results I can get out of this. Using my infrared thermometer, I'm going to measure it, and as you can see, it maxes it out, but part of this is due to the actual combustion of the cardboard. For aesthetics and a small bump in performance, I'm going to go ahead and tape the gaps. As you can see, a cast iron pan gets to at least 385, and the max I was able to record today was 396. 
One of the great things about a parabolic cooker like this is the ability to fry. So let's test that with an egg. Now that our butter is melted, I'm going to toss in an egg. If you've done any research with solar cooking, you'll realize that browning is difficult. But as you can see, I was easily able to brown this egg, and maybe even a little bit too much during this test. So just to sum up, the parabolic reflector was three feet wide by five and a half inches tall. It's made out of OSB cardboard and some aluminum flashing. So I hope you enjoyed it.